The Isle of Man is a self-governing British Crown dependency which lurks halfway in the Irish Sea between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. It has two mobile network operators of its own. UK mobile networks do not serve there, although the Isle of Man networks do use the UK's mobile country code of 234, which is a little bit strange. But anyway, the two operators are Manx Telecom and Shaw. First off, I will talk about their Spectrum portfolios, which are quite interesting due to there being two mobile network operators on the island, and as countries usually have more than that, which means the Spectrum is shared more. Manx Telecom I will start off with, and they have 2x15MHz on the 800MHz band, which is used to broadcast 4G on EARFCN 6375. Then they have 900 megahertz, which is used for 2G and 3G, of which they have 2 by 13.8 megahertz. 2G occupies most of that, with there being a single 3G carrier at UARFCN of 3043. Next off is 1800 megahertz, of which they have 2 by 20 megahertz, which is used entirely for 4G services using the EARFCN of 1850. And then finally, the last deployed band is 2100 megahertz, of which they own 2 by 10 megahertz, which is then used to broadcast two 3G carriers, of which the UARFCN of one is 10564. And the second one I don't know for sure, but it's likely to be around 10589, although this may vary. They do also have some spectrum in the 1900 megahertz band, although to the best of my knowledge, that isn't deployed and it's only 1 by 5 megahertz. Shaw's spectrum holdings are relatively similar to Manx Telecom's in terms of the bands they have, although the amount of spectrum they have in each is a little bit different in the case of some of the frequencies. So for 800 megahertz, they have 2 by 15 megahertz as well, which is used to broadcast 4G on EARFCN 6225. In terms of 900 megahertz, they have slightly more than Manx Telecom with 2 by 15 megahertz, which is used to broadcast 2G and 2 3G carriers which use the UARFCNs of 2963 and 3013. Next up is the 1800 MHz band, which they again own slightly more of than Manx Telecom does, i.e. 2 by 25 MHz, although only 20 MHz of that is used for 4G, using the EARFCN of 1350. Finally, in terms of the deployed band for sure, is the 2100 MHz band, of which they have 2 by 10 MHz. This is used for two 3G carriers, 10637 and 10662, in terms of their UARFCNs. Both Manx Telecom and Shaw use Huawei as their radio access network vendor. On the lower left is a set of Huawei cabinets, very much like the 3900As that we see in the UK. And on the lower right is some um, Huawei remote radios, which were on a shore mast. And on that note, let's move on to some masts, which I saw when I was on the Isle of Man, and look at their antenna setups with schematics. So the first mast is the Laxley UHF transmitter and I've cropped the image just to show the cellular equipment. Shore is on the top level with dual band Catherine antennas and these broadcast all four of the main deployed frequency bands that Shaw has by using diplexes to combine the two low bands together and the two high bands together. There is also visibly a master amplifier for the high bands as well. On the second and third stacks from the top are the antennas for Manx Telecom. The higher up, i.e. middle, antennas carry the low bands for Manx Telecom, so 800 megahertz and 900 megahertz. And these are diplexed together again. 
Likewise, the lower antennas for Manx Telecom carry 1800MHz and 2100MHz once again, diplexed and with a master amplifier as well. The Jerby TV transmitter is the next master example and on this one some of the UHF TV equipment can be seen but I'll be focusing on the solar antennas which are very similar to the last example. Manx Telecom have their single low band Huawei antenna which carries the 800 and 900 megahertz and then there's a single high band Catherine antenna which in this case is only carrying 2100 megahertz so no 1800 megahertz in this case. Shaw is using a triple band Catherine antenna instead of a dual band and therefore the 800 and 900 megahertz are not diplexed together but the 18 and 2100 megahertz bands still are as the antenna has only a single high band i.e. two high band ports. As before master amplifiers are used throughout for the high bands of the two operators. The next mast example located at Glentraum, I can't, don't know how to pronounce it really, is fairly similar antenna wise in a number of ways. So Manx Telecom has their Huawei single low band antenna for 800 and 900 MHz again and they have a single high band antenna for in this case just their 2100 MHz 3G. Then lower down on the mast are Catherine antennas for sure and they're doing 900 MHz, 2100 MHz and 1800 MHz so no 800 MHz in this case. The mastered amplifiers that Manx Telecom has for their 2100 MHz in this case are 2100 MHz only and therefore for them to add 1800 MHz as a capacity add would mean a master amplifier swap to do that. Whereas Shaw's are dual band master amplifiers as we saw in the last example. The location of this next master example I'm not even going to try and print out. However it is once again like the first example a TV relay. This case is using dual band Huawei antennas for Manx Telecom with the low bands of 800 and 900 MHz diplexed into one of the bands and then 2100 MHz going straight into the other ports with a mastered amplifier for just the 2100 MHz. While the last mast was Manx Telecom only, this one is Shaw only and it's designed to look a little bit like a tree with the fake branches, the brown kind of mast colour and the attempt at doing leaves although the antennas do stick out quite strongly and that isn't the only interesting feature about this mast. Its broadcasts vary on a sector by sector basis. The antennas in use are triple band Catherine antennas as we've seen before However, some ports are populated on some sides which aren't on others. Specifically, on one of the sectors in this picture, only the low band ports are connected for 800 and 900 megahertz operation, whereas on one of the other sectors, the high band ports are populated and in fact have 1800 and 2100 megahertz broadcasting from them as well through the use of a diplexer. This mast is located high up above Ramsey and that means that some of the sectors serve pretty much fields whereas at least one of the other sectors serves a kind of towny area where obviously there's a much higher density of people and therefore devices and more capacity is therefore required. But nonetheless it is a very interesting site because of the different layout on the different sectors. While on the subject of disguised masts, here's a green coloured site which features Tetra alongside a two sector Manx Telecom arrangement. 
So at the top are the two Manx Telecom antennas, which are dual band Huawei antennas with low band and high band. And interestingly, the only low band broadcast on this is the 800 megahertz. There's no low band 900 megahertz for 2G or 3G, which is a bit weird. The only legacy service is 3G on 2100 megahertz, which also features a Marsden amplifier. And then below that is the Tetra antennas. The reason this is two sectors is just basically down to the area it's designed to serve. A third sector will not serve anything meaningful and therefore a two sector design is better in terms of just being visually less obtrusive and actually two sector masks tend to be better at serving an area where a two sector site is indicated compared to say what three sector would enable for that area. And finally, to end the video, I will talk about three masts in Douglas, which is the Isle of Man's capital. The first one is a Manx Telecom mast using dual band Huawei antennas. And this is carrying all four main bands and therefore 800 and 900 are diplex together and 1800 and 2100 are diplex together. And the remote radios of Huawei are visible on the sort of darkened side of the building in this image. And also noticeable on this mast is the extent of down tilt on at least one of the sectors. And this is because the terrain of Douglas and that area of the Isle of Man means that quite a lot of the serving area of those sectors will be somewhat below the mast in effect. And therefore down tilt is beneficial to optimally serve that area. Down till is also used for a whole variety of other reasons to do with cell optimization and capacity planning as well. This site also uses dual band antennas, but it's for sure and the antennas are made by Catherine. Additionally, this site also uses diplexers, but only for 1800 and 2100 megahertz. At the time I visited, the only low band was 900 megahertz it didn't have any 800 megahertz. Also visible is part of a Huawei cabinet because like I say, Shaw uses Huawei as Max Telecom does as well. The very last mast example is a microcell. So these are typically used to provide very localized capacity to an area. And this was located on the Douglas Promenade where obviously a lot of people gather and it's a very I guess touristy and just high density location especially during good weather and therefore additional localized capacity is something which is very much wanted. The Huawei cabinet right next to the lamp post kind of gave away that there was more to look at here because the little antennas are actually very small and would have been quite easy to miss just driving past. This was certainly broadcasting 1800 MHz 4G, although I suspect it probably also would have been carrying 2100 MHz as well. Both the antennas are connected in parallel, so in effect it is just one sector. As is quite common with microcell deployments, only one feeder is going to the antennas. So this is operating in single input, single output, also known as SISO rather than with two feeders and multi-input, multi-output as the rest of the mast examples that I have shown would have been operating in. Thanks for watching this video about the Isle of Man's mobile networks and what their masts look like. I've tried to include a variety of examples to keep it interesting but I do have probably enough pictures to do a second follow-up video if people are interested in the mast on the island.